let it be the principle for helping sentient beings. Therefore, when helping sentient beings, you must remember this, let it be. We benefit sentient beings, but we shouldn't go astray. We can share teachings with them and help them. We can extend our hand to offer help, but we shouldn't bind them to us. We extend our hand to offer help. If they are willing to reach out and take our hand, we will pull them up. If they are unwilling to reach out or reject you, you shouldn't bind them and force them to come with you, as this would harm both of you. Don't impose your help on others. Instead, let it be. This is not a lack of compassion. In fact, it is an act of compassion. In a high energy environment, if someone has a very low energy level, they will definitely feel inferior, leading to jealousy and anger. They are hopeless. They are possessed by devils. It would be better for such individuals to live in the secular world, where they might live happily. Returning to the secular world may help them regain their normal state of mind. Be cautious, as you might also make such mistakes. Don't let your heart be too soft. Previously, I mentioned that as monastics, we shouldn't be swayed by our own sentiments. Being sentimental will surely harm both yourself and sentient beings. We only emphasize compassion without sentiments. There is no room for being sentimental. In regard to compassion, you certainly need to adjust it by yourself. I have always emphasized that compassion is accompanied by wisdom. Without wisdom, it can't be true compassion. The energy of compassion can only arise from the wisdom of emptiness. Without the wisdom of emptiness, the energy that arises will be sympathy or kindness, both of which are mixed with emotional attachment. Emotional attachment leads to entanglement between beings, where they cling to each other and seek to possess each other. This entanglement gives rise to demands and expectations, and if those expectations are not met, they will get upset, become angry, jealous, and they may even want to harm you. Everything they give you is for the sake of getting something back from you. Otherwise, why would they get upset? They may make some efforts toward you, but their fundamental motivation is to take more from you. If they can't get what they want, they will get upset and develop anger and jealousy toward you, while you may not even realize it. Somehow, you are resented by them. They might even harbour resentment while chanting mantras. Although they are chanting mantras of Buddhas and Bodhisattvas, their inner resentment towards you turn the mantras into curses. Isn't this harming you?